In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, on Sunday of this week we remembered God's mercy, and the Gospel spoke to us of Jesus sending the Spirit to forgive our sins. So as we begin our Eucharist this afternoon, let's be grateful for that gift of God's mercy. Let's be grateful for the gift of the forgiveness of our sins. And let us ask God to continue to give us that gift of mercy, forgiveness, and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who for the salvation of the world brought about the Paschal sacrifice, be favorable to the supplications of your people, so that Christ our High Priest interceding on our behalf, may, by his likeness to ourselves, bring us reconciliation, and by his equality with you, free us from our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the one who takes refuge in him. The Lord, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The, the Lord, Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just, but out of them all delivers them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen, but still believe. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said, The one who comes from above is above all. 
The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Although it's still a number of weeks until Pentecost, I'm struck by how frequently we have references to the Holy Spirit in the Gospels we've heard so far this week. In Sunday's Gospel, Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit on the disciples to give them the power to forgive sins. In Monday's Gospel, Jesus tells Nicodemus that he must be reborn in the Holy Spirit. In Tuesday's Gospel, Jesus tells Nicodemus that the Spirit is like the wind, it blows wherever it wills. And in today's Gospel, Jesus tells us that God does not ration the Spirit. God gives the Spirit fully, constantly, without any measure. And yet we know that we don't receive the Spirit in that full way in our own lives. In our first reading, the two disciples are filled with the Spirit. The Sanhedrin is not so filled with the Spirit. And unfortunately, sometimes we're more like the Sanhedrin than like those disciples. Sometimes as I grow older, images that I was taught in grammar school come back to me, and their meaning really becomes clearer to me. And one of those images was an image that I was given in grammar school of grace like a faucet. It's the water flowing out of a faucet. And it's like we are a cup. And we put the cup under that faucet to receive that water of grace. Sometimes there's not much room in the cup to receive the grace. Because the cup is already filled with other things. Resentments grudges, anxieties, angers, all sorts of things that occupy space in the cup and don't let the Spirit to fill it. Pretty much the situation of the Sanhedrin in our first reading today. And I was struck that in these days, when we're forced into activity, sometimes it's easy to let all sorts of things from the past begin to take a much too large a role in our minds. Past resentments, past angers, past grievances, all sorts of things that we remember in ways in these days of inactivity, we don't necessarily remember so much in days when we're active and leading our normal lives. And those things preoccupy us, and they can keep grace from flowing into the cup of our lives. So maybe one of the things we need to ask of the Lord in these days is to let us let that stuff go. Let us let go of the past and its resentments and its anxieties and its grievances and its angers. To empty out some of that stuff in the cup. So that the cup of our lives really and truly can be filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's bring our prayers to God, our Heavenly Father. First of all, let us pray for the Church, for all of us who are the Church, that we will let go of all the old resentments and angers and grudges that keep us from being open to the gift of the Spirit. For this, let us pray to the Lord. To the Lord, to our prayer. Let's pray for all the leaders of our world. Let's pray that they will be given wisdom and prudence 
as they try to guide us through the coronavirus crisis. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for all who lack adequate food and shelter and medical care in these days, especially those who have fallen ill with the virus, that we will find a way as a world to meet their needs. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for all health care workers and all other essential workers. Let's pray that God will, will give them, will, that God will reward them for the sacrifices they make for us and keep them and their families safe and sound. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of our brother Richard Baldelli, for whom we offer this afternoon's Mass, that the Holy Spirit will be with him, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick of our parish, especially the sick who are named on the altar here, who are suffering from the coronavirus, and for all the sick among our families and friends, that the Holy Spirit will heal and comfort them and strengthen their caregivers. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our deceased brothers and sisters, that God will draw them into eternal life with God. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, For each other's intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, we bring you our prayers and our needs. We join them to the prayers and the needs of all your faithful people. We ask you to give us what you know is for our good, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. From your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, fruit of the earth and of the vine, work of human hands. They will become for us the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation. Bless, bless God. God. My sisters and brothers, our gifts are prepared. Pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands to the praise and glorious name, our good and good Lord. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the Lord Jesus, to whom we have offered our great prayer of thanks and praise, is the same Lord who taught us to pray. And so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on our faith as your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
And now, let us take some time for an act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, I desire to receive you into my heart, to welcome the gift of your all-embracing love, and to offer you all my love in return. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come into my heart spiritually. I welcome you and embrace you, who are always with me, and I unite myself with you completely. Let me never be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, before our final blessing and dismissal, Let's say the prayer of the bishops for Our Lady of Guadalupe in this time of pandemic. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your Son, as you did at the wedding at Cana. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and world, and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the Church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate Mother, health of the sick and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son, Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Amen. Amen.